Alexander's mom calls him the most perfect boy in the world. She's right. I love your confidence. When diagnosed with cancer, Alexander went to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital is a pediatric treatment and research facility founded in 1962 by entertainer Danny Thomas under the dream that no child should die in the dawn of life. It is focused on treating children's catastrophic diseases, specifically leukemia and other cancers. It costs $2.8 million per day to run but they state that the patients and their families are not charged for their care because... All a family should worry about is helping their child live. It is located in Memphis, Tennessee and is a nonprofit medical corporation. They treat infants, children, teens, young adults, and in 2010, they were named the number one children's cancer hospital in the US. And we all know the commercials and the donation boxes. And since they have been founded in 1962, the survival rate of childhood cancers has increased from 20% to 80% as they treat children from around the world. But what really goes on behind the scenes at that research hospital? And what truth are they hiding behind the stats? Their commercials preach about never turning a child away but here's what a mother had to say when her son was denied treatment. I sent my son's records to St. Jude two months ago. They promised to be here for us to review his records and to get back with us with the best treatment plan available to him. St. Jude never responded. My son was denied. My son was denied. My son was denied. My son was denied. Son was denied. So why is this? This brings us to topic number one, history of fraud and defective devices. In an investigation against St. Jude's, which happened to be their third one since 2010, they repeatedly violated the False Claims Act liability. This states that you can't submit claims for payment to fraudulent Medicare or Medicaid while knowing that it is in fact fraudulent. St. Jude's was investigated for improper intercompany communications concerning the promotion of their pacemakers for their patients, basically knowing that they were getting defective ones and continuing to use them. In 2011, the company settled a $16 million lawsuit alleging unlawful use of post-market studies as vehicles to pay physicians to implant its brand of pacemakers. In 2012, they were investigated again due to possible unlawful kickback payments issued to doctors in several states. St. Jude's insists it is complying with all investigative requests but cannot predict the outcome or impact of the inquiry. Or is that just something to cover up the fact that the claims made about them were right? I mean, if they had nothing to hide, why didn't they Prove it instead of settling the lawsuit and sweeping it, sweeping it under the rug. Bad publicity. All we got from them was their word and nothing else. 
The news about this false claim act continued to be talked about to the to this day. The government alleged that St. Jude failed to disclose anything about the specific models of devices that they use. They weren't being investigated for their devices, allegedly using defective ones. They said, oh no, we're, we're not, but you, you're just gonna have to take our word, but we're gonna, we're gonna settle this lawsuit by paying it so we don't have to, so, so y'all don't have any room to try to prove us wrong. We're just gonna tell you that we're right and that's all that you guys get. But we are complying with it though. But, but we're not, but, but, but we're not gonna tell you anything about the devices we actually use, the actual thing we're being investigated for. We're not gonna get into sp to the specifics of that. Too much work. The, the kids. <laughs> the medical device manufacturer allegedly sold defective devices to healthcare facilities, which they then actually used them and implanted the devices into patients who were high risk. Even in 2021, St. Jude's paid another $27 million to settle False Claims Act charges of knowingly selling the, device, the defective heart devices to healthcare facilities. Once again, another settlement to cover it up. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't agree to pay if I didn't do anything wrong, if that money could have been going towards the actual research and treatment of the children. Where are your donations really going? They eventually stopped distributing the devices and they were recalled. But not before one patient who received the defective device initiated another False Claims Act suit against them. In a separate instance, they agreed to pay $3.7 million to resolve allegations that they paid Ill illegal kickbacks, aka bribes or payoffs or payola. Because she has built her career off of sympathy and payola. <laughs> The two hospitals to secure heart device business as we know that this is something they were struggling with these devices already they continue to say that they keep paying people off because they don't want to risk what would happen if they were proven guilty but again they're they're not saying that they did or didn't do it either it was said that their marketing strategy interfered with the doctor's independent decision making and their incentives to gain market lessen the patient care options meaning it had more to do with sales than patient well-being. What are we really donating to? And what happens behind the scenes that they don't show and that doesn't make it to the stats? This brings us to topic number two. Fighting donors' families in court for share of estates. We know St. Jude's loves their commercials and donation boxes encouraging people to donate, but what happens behind the scenes to potential donors who may be able to help them out a little more? These wealthy families are targeted in a much more intimate way as potential donors who are considering leaving the hospital a substantial amount in their wills. Once this suggestion was made, St. Jude's became keen on creating relationships with the donors to make sure that they sent the money their way after they died. This included tactics like representatives from the hospital showing up to their homes, dining with them at restaurants, sending them personal notes and birthday cards, and even scheduling something with them they refer to as love calls. This is a large part of what helped them become so established. St. Jude's went as far as to battle these families in court over assets left behind from their loved ones. Vance Lanier, someone who won a years-long legal battle against them over his father's estate, expressed anger about the fact that both sides spent heavily on the case. And he said, Think about all of, all of the fees for lawyers that didn't go to the children of St. Jude. Not one cancer patient. Where is the sanity in all of this? This happened another time with Nona Harris, elderly, childless, very wealthy. She notified St. Jude's in 1996 that she was considering leaving the money in her will. They spent the next two decades practically stalking this woman. They use an internal database that collects info on donors to track nearly 100 calls in contact between Harris and the charity's fundraisers. This was almost one every two months. 
by the time she passed in 2015, the charity knew everything about her, about her husband's health problems, the medicine he took, her family history, the property they own, but most important to them, that the couple planned to leave their nearly $6 million estate to St. Jude. When her husband changed the estate plan to reduce it to $2.5 million from the $6 million, St. Jude took them to court too and went against several of his family members. Now, what happened to children, right, right? Children and their families shouldn't have to worry about paying because they should be Oh, only, only focused on the child surviving. They preach that. Preach, preach, preach. But how are they going to say that? And then put these families through all of this over a suggestion about leaving the money in a will. Shouldn't they be getting to focus on their loved one passing? But no. St. Jude's is money hungry for their own benefit. Probably have more money to, to settle them lawsuits about the defective devices and all that, and not going to the children's care. And don't even get me started on all the money they spent on lawyers for no reason. They were really waiting for these people to die so that they can snatch everything. And when asked about it, they simply declined to answer specific questions about their bequest program, including how many cases they have going on and about individual cases involving people's wills. However, one lawyer who oversees these matters told a court that they were involved in more than 100 legal fights over disputed estates. He also admitted that they use donor dollars within these cases where the donor reduces how much money they want to leave them. St. Jude's declined to provide further details on the use of donor funds to pay legal costs. To make the case that all proceeds should go to them, they even made the argument against the families that the relatives are not entitled to any proceeds from their family estates. And they are. They even called one of the boys. What is, what is it, guys? Did, you, did they fax over that part of the, the document? I was being put in. Oh, perfect. There we go. They called one of the boys the disinherited son. Disinherited? They were basically saying that they have more of a right to these people's, to the dearly departed's money than their actual family members. And all of starting over a suggestion. Hey, yeah, I might, I might leave y'all some money when I die. All right, oh, okay. Doing all this without hitting nine kids. Now back to St. Jude's. I had a lot to say about me the other day in the press. Back to Nona Harris. After she called and said she's thinking of potentially leaving the money, she asked to not be contacted again. However, this request was ignored as they kept calling her and writing her birthday cards and holiday cards and even a random note saying, I thought of you today. They keep a portfolio of all estate donors ranked by importance to keep tabs on them. These cards were often followed up what calls are on the holidays to check in on her? One second, you guys. Somebody's calling. Sorry. Hello? Hello? Who's speaking? A fan of your work. Why are you calling? Just to check in on ya. They said just to check in. I, I know I didn't give my number to no St. Jude facility. They refer to these as love calls. But St. Jude declined to give details once again on what these calls actually entailed. They even invited her and family to special events, which they never went to, asking them repeatedly to come to visit the hospital and basically stalking these people up until Nona died and then continuing to put them through it in court after she was gone. They even had a note when they were begging them to visit the hospital saying, I will be sure to be at the front door waiting for your arrival. St. Jude, ain't no saint in there. And before all of this, the Harris family loved St. Jude, which is why Nona was considering donating in the first place, but I'm pretty sure their opinions changed after the harassment. They kept this case going for a long time and even got out of it, St. Jude got out of it with a generous multi-million dollar bequest. It wasn't over until after the husband died 
and the great nephew ended it with saying, they used to support St. Jude, but not anymore, calling it a waste of time and money and declares he will never give them another dime. This brings us to topic, I wrote topic four. Oh no, you guys wrote it? Oh, that's fine. See, my colleagues are, you guys know, um, watch the series. Um, oh, that, oh, that's completely fine. No worries. Y'all forgot y'all got a new boss in charge? Um, topic four is supposed to say topic three. Okay, per, per, we ran on schedule. We fine. We good. Good. Okay. Hmm? Oh. But we got transmission that we actually have an inside confidential source that has an experience with St. Jude and opinions. Um that will help expand on our conversation. All right, so this whole St. Jude's thing really been grinding the gear for the last couple of years because these commercials have really been advertising something that I don't think they're really doing. If you really pay attention, these commercials say research syndrome. What are we researching? Cancer? We know about cancer. Well, how are you going to help the kid? Are we giving you money? What is the money going to do? Help you research? You don't need us for that. You can use Google. Use how scientists was doing it before. And are you charging the parents? It's like, come on, what are you really doing? Where's the bullhead kids? Do I have to walk in there? Cut my hair off? Cut you still? And the man answers? Which brings us to topic three. Building families? A St. Jude security guard knocked on the car window to ask what a man was doing in their parking lot. He explained his daughter and her mother were staying in the St. Jude's free patient housing, but they only provide housing for one parent. They couldn't afford a hotel. The guard did nothing and let the man go back to sleep and St. Jude said nothing further about the situation. Now the father didn't care as long as they were treating the child. But this gave us more insight about what the families have to go through versus what St. Jude's advertises. Only about half of the 7.3 billion that St. Jude has received in contributions in the past five years went to the hospital's research and caring for patients. If there was a spit of so much money on stalking these people, lawsuits, paying doctors to shush about the defective devices, getting people to get off their trail and sweep things under the rug. Maybe all of the 7.3 could have went, maybe more kids could have been saved. A substantial portion of the cost for treatment is not paid by St. Jude, but by families, private insurance, or by Medicaid, the government insurance program for low-income families. One family even had to... This is true in here. This is... What information was double, triple, quadruple, five, triple, check? What? Wow. One family had to rely on a mixed martial arts fighter to help raise money that St. Jude would not cover, and another family spent money on treatment costs that they originally had saved up to purchase a home. But what happened to no families are billed? It's not free, and they do have to worry about costs, not just their child. And people may say, oh, they're still spending money on the treatment costs, and they don't have to pay for the family housing and travel and the food to, to have them completely worry-free. But if they don't have to pay that, same case for they don't have to pay all that money in, in those lawsuits, then then okay. If, okay, you could say they don't have to be covering all that, all of that for the families. But then let's look at where, the, where that money is going. Paying off lawsuits to not have to deal with being investigated for using defective devices, which are treating treat is supposed to be treating the patients and they're also paying money harassing these people after their loved ones have died which they try to aren't they trying to save people's loved ones from dying it is because you could say all right they don't have to pay all that they don't have to secure all the family's financial troubles they just have to treat the kid but then they're spending all this money elsewhere not treating the kid when they could be doing that and helping the families, paying those costs, having the dad not sleeping in the car. <laughs> For real, all this money. Next time you see that donation commercial, I don't know. 
So let me see that box. Pull, instead of pulling that in, let me pull that out. <laughs> and in written responses, Lawyers for St. Jude and its fundraising arm, ALSAC, they put an emphasis on its accomplishments since the opening in 1962. Here they go again deflecting. It was the first time with the, the lawsuits. Are you guys using defective devices? Oh, no comment on that, but we're going to pay you money to settle the lawsuit so we don't have to further talk about that. But we're not saying if we did it or not still either. Just like this, complaints, valid complaints are coming from families, from, from these people that are seeing the shady things going on. And they're just saying, oh no, but look at all we have done. Yes, we're not discrediting what they have done. It's like we have written here. We're not denying that they have saved lots of children and should be celebrated, but they're using that as an excuse for all this shady behind the scenes stuff. And to this specific instance, they tried to make up for it with increasing travel benefits to two parents instead of one, but why do they have to keep getting called out to do the right thing? And me and my colleagues think it's worth noting that we came back, back to the blue, back to the OG setup, and not let the old boss in charge of the series, you know, scare us out of this iconic, legendary location just because he died here. You know, they cleaned up the scene, now we're back. They got the revenge, now it's hat. We're here. And then note how we, we were able to start the video right away. We started right, we're right into it, right into the info. We, if you go back and watch the, the previous videos in this series with the old boss, there were all these squabbles and, and interruptions and, and not having the, the information, the, the book, the folders, the, note, the notes ready in hand. But see here, we, we were able to jump right into it. And now we can have a fruitful discussion about St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. And, 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 and what and that don't mean the old setup is toast though we, 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 we're we still gonna so let's continue to talk about it and what do you guys think now about St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital I know I'm never gonna be able to look at one of those commercials the same or one of those donation boxes but we finished it out Great show, guys. This was excellent, amazing. Cheers to 2023. Um, have a happy holiday. You guys go home, enjoy your families. Um, I'm going to do the same. And stay with the juice. Good night. Successful show. Legendary. That's your thing. All right, good night, guys. That's a wrap. Foolish colleagues. They think they can bring someone new in here to sit and buy a chair. The OG can't be gotten rid of. They thought they could kill me off this series that easily. <laughs> They're about to start their little video when they are all none the wiser that I am securing transport to their location. Watch out. Not being in charge of this series. So grateful. Okay, let me close up. Alright. Alright. Everybody out? Okay, I'm locking up. Only thing here, locked up some airways. Oh. supposed to be dead Ugh. and you weren't supposed to sit in my chair and the audacity of you to come back to the OG filming location where the colleagues thought they got the revenge <laughs> the OG boss is back